Hello, I've got a brand new book to show you. It's written by Paul Stewart and it's illustrated by me. And whether you're listening to this at home or in school, I hope you're going to enjoy a few behind the scenes snippets and you're going to get to meet the author, Paul Stewart, who's going to tell you a little bit about the inspiration for the book. And at the end, you're in for a treat because Paul is going to read the first few pages of the story to you. The book is all about a squirrel who can't get her babies to sleep because the forest around her is so noisy. So she goes to see her friend Owl to ask for help. I made the whole book using collage, so every single thing you see in the book has been cut out with scissors. You can see there's lots of layers stuck together there. I've cut out every little bit of that scene. I've used all sorts of materials in the book, from bits of old maps, to painted tissue paper. This blackbird was made that way. And the funny thing is, the minute I finished sticking the last feather on that blackbird, a real blackbird started singing very loudly through the window. The final page shows the squirrel family tucked up in their cosy bed. And I'll bet you'll never guess what the blanket is made out of. It's actually a church floor in the Yorkshire Wolds. Now let's meet Paul Stewart and see what he's got to tell us about the story. I've always found the idea of silence rather wonderful. You can go into silence and it's almost like you regenerate. I've been thinking about the different types of silence you could have. So when I was a little kid, uh, we had a garden uh, and there was an alleyway next to it. And occasionally, most years in fact, a blackbird would nest in the rose bush. And I'd peek through the fence and there it was. Later at night, I'd be lying in bed and I could still hear the blackbird, the male one singing, but then there'd be silence. And it was usually because our cat had gone too near. <laughs> and so there'd be this moment of silence and then the male black worm would go, ah, 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 that kind of warning sound they make. But it's yes. the silence. Once I heard the silence, I knew something else was gonna go wrong. When I was a, a grown up, uh, I once went along to a wonderful concert. It was a Bruckner symphony. At the end of it, that moment of magical silence when everyone's just going, oh, that was amazing. And then as a father, when I had my, my son, when he was very little, occasionally he'd fall over as small children do. And there'd be that moment of silence, again, sort of so powerful. And it could go either way. Sometimes, obviously, if he would hurt himself, he would scream or cry. Sometimes he'd just laugh because he'd fallen over and knew that he'd done something silly. So that moment of silence became really important. Which way is this going to go? Because of all the books that I've done, I've done loads and loads of traveling. And the one important thing is getting a good night's sleep. And uh, I remember once I was in a hotel in New York and it was so noisy. There was a party going on above. Um, there was loud traffic, honking of horns. And I, I started to think of these sort of moments of silence in the past. And then I found that they were actually coming into my head. Every so often, there was a pocket of silence in all this noise, like a tunnel. And in the end, I went through the hole, into the tunnel, whoo, and was asleep. How interesting to hear that. When I first read the text, I really, really loved it straight away. And I think there was, to me, there was something really, really poetic about the idea of these pockets of silence. And I'm, I'm a person that rather likes quiet. So it really, really appealed to me. I love the last page. Um, <laughs> you know, there's been a the big, big problem bedtime. all the way through. And finally, it is resolved so beautifully. 
with the squirrels finally getting uh, a good night's sleep. It is actually a perfect bedtime story. And I can imagine it's going to go down very well with parents reading it and the child's in bed and then they just say, hush. Ooh, there are certain sounds that make me shiver. I'd gone to see um, some music and it was a woman singer. She had a guitar and she tapped the microphone. And I don't know why, but that was just the most beautiful sound. And then she whispered into it, it's so lovely to be here. And again, I got these tingles. <laughs> I love the sound of the wind in trees, that soft, gentle swishing and swaying. I think I like that even more than water. And I do like the sound of streams <laughs> running over oh, stones yeah. and things. Yeah. Uh, I like the sound of children playing. My mother was a, a primary school teacher. Uh, my wife was a primary school teacher. And there's just something nice about happy sound of children playing in oh. I completely agree. When thank I... you so much, Paul, for chatting to me about a little bit of Hush. And thank you for writing such a lovely story. I've really enjoyed illustrating it. Oh, that's so lovely to hear. Thank you so much for illustrating it. And um, it's been lovely talking to you this morning. And now I'm going to finish by letting you listen to Paul reading the first few pages of the story. I hope you enjoy it. Time for your afternoon nap, my little ones, said Squirrel to her babies. She tucked them up in their warm, cosy beds in the big tree. Sleep well, she said, but they didn't sleep a wink. The starlings squabbled. The crows made a horrible din. And as for the woodpeckers, it was nothing but knock, 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 knock. Little is baby wouldn't stop crying. I'll go and see Owl, said Squirrel at last. Maybe he can help us. It isn't easy sharing a tree with neighbours like ours, Squirrel told Owl. They're so noisy. Noisy, said Owl. Hmm. Let me see what I can find. Owl inspected the pots and jars on the shelf behind him. Aha, said Owl at last. This should do the trick. Squirrel held the jar up to the light. What's in it? She asked. A little bit of hush, said Owl. But I can't see anything, said Squirrel. Oh, you can't see a little bit of hush, said Owl, hooting with amusement. But what can you hear right now? Um... The wind in the leaves outside, she said. The magpies chattering. The hedgehog children playing. Now take out the cork, said Owl. Squirrel did as she was told and everything fell still. Owl's workshop was suddenly filled with a wonderful, peaceful, sleep well, sweet dream golden slumber, little bit of hush. Well, if you want to know how Owl makes that magical little bit of hush, you'll have to read the book.